We're in the second half of Jonah. Isn't that spectacular? And so we begin with Jonah 3.1. Jonah 3.1 is very similar uh, to Jonah 1.1. In fact, there's a kind of contrast between them, um, between chapter 1 and chapter 3. In chapter, chapter 1, Jonah receives a word of the Lord and he disobeys. But in Jonah 3, Jonah receives the same word of the Lord again, but this time he obeys. Go ahead and see if you can pronounce Jonah 3 1. It's very short. Here's how I would pronounce it. Vayahi davar Yahweh el Yonah shenit lemor. Okay, so what does this mean? So Vayahi, again, Vayahi davar Yahweh el Yonah lemor. That part is exactly what, I, if I'm remembering correctly, that's exactly word for word what Jonah 1.1 1, 1 says. The only new word here is shenit. And shenit means second. So if the first word, you know, and a, the, the verse 1 of the, of the book says, and the word of the Lord was to Jonah saying. Um, this verse simply adds the word second. And the second word of the Lord came to Jonah saying. There you have it. So that's the verse. But there, are, you know, when we started out in Jonah one one, we were just learning the letters. So now we know we know a few things, right? We've we've read two chapters of Jonah in Hebrew, so we know some stuff, right? So let's let's now look at that that verse, the content of Jonah one one in Jonah three one, and let's look at the grammar, right? So you know, Davar Yahweh. You've memorized the vocabulary word Davar, which means the word. Um, you know the name of God, Yahweh. Some some people say Adonai out of reverence. I'm not trying to be irreverent. Uh, I, I'm convinced that uh, the Israelites, when they read Jonah, would have said Yahweh. Um, if it's by the, by the time of Christ, they'd stop saying it. You know El, that's the word too. You know Yonah, Jonah, right? You know the vocabulary word Amar, which means to say Lemor is all over the Old Testament. I just kind of memorized. When I, whenever I see Lemor, I translate it as saying. But we're going to tell you what the grammar of it is in just a second. But I want to look at Vayahi. What, what do we know about Vayahi? So, you know the, you know the Vav. Vav means and. Um, but we, we would normally have Vav Patak doubling. Okay? So, this is a little weird. There's an obscure rule I learned from Lasor, who basically says... When there's a vocal shava under a doubled performative, sometimes the doubling goes away. I don't know why this happens. I'm I'm really good at yes, sir. You said you said it. I, I'll I'll take your word for it. So we would normally expect there to be a doubling in the the yod, and there isn't. But it's converted, right? This is a converted imperfect, and the yod is a performative. Remember, imperfect puts stuff on the front. The perfect puts stuff on the end. I think I'm mirrored, right? So the the uh, 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 imperfect puts stuff on the front, and the perfect puts stuff on the end, right? Imperfect puts stuff on the front. Perfect puts stuff on the end. So this is an imperfect. It's a converted imperfect, and the yod tells us it's third masculine something. If there was a shuruk at the end, it'd be a third masculine plural. There's no shuruk at the end, and so it's third masculine singular. So it's converted imperfect, third masculine singular. Got it. The word it's from is haya. It's another vocabulary word you should know because it was at the very beginning of the course, um, and it's a it's an important verb to be to be or not to be. Um, now this is also a weak verb, and a weak verb is a verb where one of the three main consonants is a little wonky. Uh, in this case, it's a third hey verb, and the third hey goes away, um, and we see it right here. Right? It's like where's the hey? There should be a hey here. This is haya. Where's the hay? Um, third, the hay goes away. Um, and so that's what's weak about third hay verbs. One of the things that's weak about them is that the hay goes away. So vayahi is and it was. Third masculine singular converted imperfect from haya. Okay, so now we know what that weird form is. I would just memorize it. It's in it's in Genesis 1, right? And and God said, let there be light and there was light. Um, vayahi or, yahi or, um let there be light, and there was light. Okay, Lamor, what is this thing? Well, this is Lamed, which means two, plus Amor. But notice the holum after the second consonant. This is something called an infinitive construct. Um, and it's very simple. 
I think I've mentioned it before, when you have a preposition on a verb, it's probably an infinitive construct. And you would translate something like to say. Although saying works better, right? Um, and it was the second word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, that just works. Um, but it's the second word of, literally, it's more like the second word of uh, the Lord came to Jonah to say, blah, blah, blah. Um, so very simple. The usual form of an infinitive construct is a vocal schwa under the first consonant and a holum after the second. Um, this, the, the olive quiesces, and so the, the vowels have done a little little crazy thing there at the beginning. Um, but but normally in an infinitive shv- construct, it's a shv- vocal schwa under the first and a holum after the second. Well, okay, we've done it. We've started the second half of Jonah with Jonah 3.1. And the second word of the Lord came to, the, to Jonah saying. Uh, this is what's called an ordinal number. Um, Shani would be two, maybe. Um, Shanit um, is second. It's the order, first, second, third. Ordinal, ordinal. Okay, um, onward to Jonah 3.2.